There's no question about it. The self-storage industry has gone through a construction boom in the U.S. As of September 2018, new units coming online or planned to come online account for 9.3% of all the self-storage inventory in the entire U.S. So a lot of product is coming online or is planning to come online. How will that affect the lease up of your new self storage or your expansion or your conversion? Let's talk about that. My name's Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage, and I'm the creator of the Self Storage Quick Start Academy. And what I do is I support the small investor who wants to get in the self storage business or who wants to grow their self storage business, strategically do so in a way that creates true wealth and a fulfilling career. You can find out and get a lot of support at Creating Wealth Through Self Storage.com or the quickstartacademy.com. And part of what I talk about in the training is how to know whether the submarket you're in is a good submarket to add more space to or not. Now, according to Yardy Matrix, where I get a lot of my information, of the 31 major metro markets, Nashville has a lot of self storage coming on. Raleigh Durham has a lot of self storage coming on. Portland, Oregon does, as well as Boston, Massachusetts. And we can't forget Orlando, Florida either. According to Yardy, those markets have a lot of self storage planned or under construction. And yet of the 31 major markets, there's a lot that need self storage. Probably where the most underserved markets are San Francisco, California, parts of Los Angeles, California, and what's called the Inland Empire in California. Now, these areas have high barriers of entry, stringent approval processes, and a lot of land use restriction. So how fast will your space lease up? Well, in the past, I used to use 1,000 square feet, 1,200 square feet, maybe 1,500 square feet net absorption a month. Then I would run my analysis. We would see if the project worked. We would get a feasibility report, and whatever that said, we'd adjust our performa to it. We always exceeded, hit or exceeded our performa numbers. Now here's the deal, it only takes one property, one project or so to rent up slower than what you had in your performa to really humble you. So in reality, there are a lot of factors that will ultimately determine how fast a project is going to lease up. So people who are doing the feasibility reports, what really all they have to use are the historical information they can get about that submarket to make their determination. So in our case, we mostly do expansions and conversions. So what that means is from the time we get the feasibility report to the time we're online leasing the new space is usually a very short period of time. Now in the projects where we do new construction ground up on green space, sometimes the time between that feasibility report and the time we can bring the product online could be a year, year and a half. Some cases it could be even two years. A lot can happen in a submarket in two years time. Here's what we've seen. In most cases, when you're building a large facility, what I'm calling 50,000 square feet or more, it's going to take two to four years of time to get to stabilized occupancy. A lot can happen in two to four years. We've seen the absorption vary wildly in a three year period on the same project. Anywhere starting at 2,000, 2,400 square feet a month and going as low as two to 300 average a month. Same facility, different time, different periods of the lease up. 
And when things begin to slow down in a sub market in a lease up situation, sometimes they can go real slow. So what can happen in a sub market that will cause lease up to go slower than anticipated in the feasibility report or your performa? Well, here's what we've seen. First of all, the obvious, more self storage space hitting your sub market. We've also seen the impact on lease up when a major employer leaves or slows down that impacts employment in that sub market. We've also seen what happens when you're in a sub market that has lower than average income or you're in a sub market where the population growth is actually negative or flat. And also if you're in a sub market where a larger than average percentage of the population are new immigrants coming into the country, that can really affect the demand. It shows up in the demographics as part of what calculates the demand but what we've discovered is people newly immigrating to this country have little need for self storage till they really assimilated into the culture here. Those are all things that can happen during a lease up period that can really affect the sub market and affect how fast your self storage facility will lease up. What's important is to keep your finger on the pulse of those items and on the pulse of your sub market so that you can pick pivot and make adjustments as you need to if something happens in that sub market to slow down the lease up process. So what are some best practices that will help assure your success as you bring more space on in a sub market? Well, let's cover them. Know the supply, harp on this, know the supply demand of your sub market before you get started. Know your number, know the average income for your sub market. What we've discovered is if you're in a sub market with lower than average income for your area, what happens is the tenants don't stay as long. So you literally have to burn more calories per income dollar in a lower income area, not to mention what you have to do to stay, keep physical occupancy and economic occupancy close to each other. Make sure you're in retail type location and or your facility has good visibility. The days of being in an industrial park or in a neighborhood uh, or at the end of a cul-de-sac where no one can see the property, those days are over. Those facilities are becoming very irrelevant in the self storage world as we know it today. You want highly visible facilities on major traffic routes. Don't assume because there's new apartments going up in the area or there's some new housing starts in the area that that's going to mean there's a lot of demand. Yes, it can be a good thing, but it isn't going to drive a lot of demand. I mean, think about it. If you have a new 400 unit, which is large, apartment complex going up next door to where you're thinking of expanding or putting a self storage facility in, let's do the numbers. If there's 400 units and you average two people per apartment, that's 800. Let's say that in this sub market, the average is seven square feet of storage per person. You take 800 times seven, that's 5,600. So the maximum amount of demand a major apartment complex can create is 57, 5,600 square feet. So don't just assume because there's housing starts, that could be a good indicator of what's going on in the sub market. It could point to population growth, but just know that a new subdivision or a new apartment complex isn't going to make or break most self storage facilities. Never, 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 never build or expand or add space just because you own the land or just because it's an easy deal to do. Know your sub market. Also, the next best practice is try not to get too far ahead of the market. Phase in as much as you can on your construction. Yes, I know that 
construction managers and builders and erectors and suppliers all coach you to build as much as you can while everyone's there to keep the cost down and yes it might keep some of the cost down but if you're servicing 30 40 thousand square feet of unleased up self storage and the market slows down and you're paying interest on that believe me that'll dwarf any potential savings you may have had by building it at the time while everyone was still there as much as you can phase your construction projects in don't get too far ahead of the market I also see a number of people who are of the mindset that the more climate control the better well, that's not always the case. I can't tell you the number of projects I've looked at where the climate control and the non-climate control are literally the same price or within a few dollars of each other. That tells me that there's more climate control than that sub-market really demands or really wants. Don't just put climate control in because you can or because you think that 20 to 30 percent extra is going to make the project. Put the climate control in in accordance to what the demand is for climate control in your submarket. Well, how will you know? That's right. Your feasibility report will tell you. Which brings me to my final best practice to ensure that your lease up goes well. Always get a full feasibility report. Don't just get a desktop version if you're bringing new space into a market because it's cheaper. You want to know as much as you can about that sub market. Believe me, the three to five thousand dollars you're going to save on that feasibility report is nothing when you're a million dollars in debt on a project that isn't leasing up. I'm talking from experience here. If you're bringing self storage space, new space into a sub market, get a good full feasibility report. You cannot have too much information about your sub market. If it's six months to a year between the time the feasibility report's done and we're bringing the space online, we are now updating those feasibility reports. Now I'm sharing these best practices with you from experience. Nothing's more humbling than having a project that's leasing up slower than you said it would as you're talking to partners or lenders or your spouse. If you adhere to these best practices, your odds of success in, during the lease up are going to improve a hundredfold, I promise. Don't be afraid to build, expand, or convert. Just be smart and be strategic about it. Follow those best practices. You do that, your odds of success have really increased in the self-storage business. And the self-storage business is still the greatest business there is for the small investor. Thank you very much. My name is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage, and I'm the creator of the Storage World Analyzer. I invite you to explore using the Storage World Analyzer. In today's market, it helps to have every tool at your disposal. StorageWorldAnalyzer.com, Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage.com. I look forward to being with you again soon. See you then.